Okay. Can everybody hear me? Oh, there we go. Um, uh, but we have a little bit of time before dinner is, is served, I understand, and there's something that we'd like to take care of. We thought we'd go be doing this a little bit later in the night, but Ron Manners just said that he has to leave in an hour. So we would miss, we would screw up the whole thing because we wanted to surprise him with something. Uh, as you know, this is, um, uh, this gathering has been jointly hosted by Atlas and also Lion Rock Institute. And uh, there's sort of a common thread, you know, um, one of our favorite supporters for a long time has been Ron Manners, and Ron's also played a very instrumental role in Lion Rock, and we thought that we would take the opportunity tonight to, um, to thank him, and to do a little bit of a surprise parade Ron Manners for making so much great stuff happen. <laughs> So we are not going to let him sneak off. He tried to do sort of a, like, I won't see you, so goodbye. And then, <laughs> oh, yeah, no. That's not going to happen, Ron. So um, I think we have a few people that want to, um, to say just a couple words, and I hope that everybody has um, uh, wine or beer or something in their, their glasses, because I think we'll do these in the manner of toasts. Um, would you want to get us started? Okay, so uh, welcome Bill Stacy, Chairman of the Lion Rock Institute, and the first night of Scholar ever. Thank you very much. I, I'm not sure if I'm, the, I, I do not think I'm the person that started Ron the, the longest. I would not be surprised if, uh, if John Utley has met Ron before I did, but I first met Ron in, in 1987. And, um, and it was a wonderful experience getting off the bus in Kalgoorlie, having sent a letter to random people around Australia and said, I'm doing a bit of academic work on libertarianism, and I just wondered if you could help. And Ron sent a letter back, there were so emails in 1987, um, uh, unless you were in the physics faculty. And, uh, and, so, um, uh, and so Ron said, sure, I'd love to help via that. Why don't you come up to Kilgore? So I got on a bus and, um, and I met Ron. And, um, uh, and he's enriched my life just so much. Ron is um, really one of a kind. Um, he represents our ideas in his personality and his character in a way that is um, just unique. He, he lives libertarianism um, in, in a way that I think many people aspire to. And so his um, joyous approach to life, um, his optimism about uh, our ideas and our beliefs, um, his love of, of youth, and I noticed he picked young people and was taking photos with young people before he goes at one o'clock. Um, all the young people in the room haven't had a photo with Ron, now's the, the, the time to do it. Um, and, and Ron's enterprise, you know, as many people who, who um, see Ron today know in the um, world of free market ideas, he's enterprising, but before then Ron was a businessman, he still has his businesses um, that he runs. Not every business Ron has um, run has been um, successful in terms of making money, but he understands creative destruction and he understands that you get <laughs> down, you, get, you jump up, and you just keep on going. Um, and he's had some businesses that have been extraordinarily successful um, as well. So, um, uh, Ron also is an engineer by training, and there's just this desire to do things. If you just come up with a piece of paper, that's not really enough. Ron wants to shape and mold the world and make it a better place. Not in a planning sort of way, but... Um, in a way of an engineer that just sort of improves things and makes things better for himself, better for people around him, makes all of our life better. And he applies that to the realm of ideas um, and think tanks in a way um, that I think uh, is really representative of the best of the think tank entrepreneurs that Atlas has tried to, to, um, to develop, but you know, all of us who are involved in think tanks um, try and uh, replicate. There's one other thing that I think is some um, really remarkable about Ron. He's not partisan in a way that political people often are. Because Ron is not about politics, he's about liberty and about freedom. And the idea of collectives and parties and things like that, he's just not interested. It's not that he hates people in political parties or doesn't like them, it's just, so what's the point? Um, why can't you do this and this and this and this rather than have to pull your way up through some sort of an organization. So the, the focus on truth rather than partisan beliefs and, uh, and applying that to getting things done is in many ways inspirational, especially when you come from a small 
no small town, Kalgoorlie, live in a small town, birth in a small country, Australia, where everyone knows everyone. It's pretty easy for things to factionalise. I mean, footy teams are okay. Um, uh, mine isn't in the finals, but um, uh, and Fremantle didn't win, so my two teams didn't get there. Um, but um, uh, yeah, that's fine. But um, but partisanship, battling for power, is just something that that I think Ron finds totally alien. And what that is really good at doing is when you get a group of people together with disparate ideas but a germ of, of a belief in liberty. Um, you know, Ron helps that to shine through. Um, uh, obviously, his work with young people through Mancal, I think, is distinctive. Mancal is a different sort of think tank to many. It's sort of in the tradition of IHS a little bit, but it's not so academic. Um, uh, it's very broad. Um, it sponsors people from Perth and Western Australia. It's a long way away. It helps them to come out and see the rest of the world, uh, as Ron helped me as the first Mancal scholar to, um, uh, to, to do the same, before we even sort of invented Mancal scholars. So I think you know, I owe a debt to Ron. I think many of us um, uh, owe a debt to Ron. I think Ron would say, you don't owe us a debt. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm sure other people would like to um, share their enjoyment of every minute with Ron now. So I'll um, yield the floor. But I think we need another toast. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say something sensible before I, before I, you know, <laughs> Until the death of a, a wonderful fellow called Manuel Io some years ago, there were two engineers in the Black Pellerin Society. And now, as far as I know, there's only one. But dear old Manuel used to say to me, when he saw the, uh, the name badges that we have at Black Pellerin, we used to huddle in the corner saying, if there were more of us engineers involved in one pillar, we would design a main badge that would have more than a 50% chance of being <laughs> 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 so, we were on the engineers. Uh, uh, thank you, folks. Great, great to be with you, and I'll stick quietly away in about it. <laughs> but first round, you have to put up with a couple more uh, toasts in your honor. I know that Alex um, and Dan wanted to uh, say some, some words. Uh, let me know if you also um, want to put your hand up and uh, do a toast. Okay. We might be here for a little while. But Alex. I don't recall the first time I met Ron, but I think I asked the learner real question. The question you have. How did you fell in love with freedom? And he basically told me to think out of the box because you know he said, "Oh, I discovered freedom by opening up the box and reading the wrapping paper." Then the wrapping paper were pages from the Freeman. <laughs> so you were thinking how to communicate ideas for freedom while you use your books as wrapping paper, and you might discover uh, a wrong manners. Uh, you know. Uh, Oh, was a couple of years ago, he sat me next to an empty chair for a very important dinner. And he said, oh, he sat me next to an empty chair. <laughs> He's a big patient, we're there, and the empty chair was there. But then uh, came a lady who, I did not know who she was. I had a very a nice evening with her, Gina Reinhardt. <laughs> uh, and so I became a friend and papa with uh, Gina. And I told her that we were going to raise a glass, and I forgot my glass, perhaps my wife would bring me uh, one the glass with wine. I told her that we were going to raise a glass uh, for you, uh, Ron, and basically she admires you tremendously, not only as a minor hall of fame, you know, I think you're, you're a minor of freedom talent, you know, so uh, thank for everything you do. And she said, she said you are the treasure of capitalism, a great West Aussie and a long-term dear friend. Gina has been is the Australian lady that has created more wealth in the history of Australia. So, to Gina and all the friends of Ron, Ron, thank you for everything you have done. We have a great Hall of Fame minor. <laughs> Is that it? Is 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 it
So many stories have been told about Ron, and I don't really have anything to add, except I do want to clarify that as a minor, that is with an E, not an O. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I also want to uh, say that the other great connection that Ron has had in the movement is with the Foundation for Economic Education, which prior to being the chairman of Atlas, I have the great honor of being the chairman of the Foundation for Economic Education. And Ron has been a tremendous uh, supporter of many organizations, and Lion Rock, and Atlas, and the Foundation for Economic Education are all honored to have us. Let me just add a quick word. Uh, I was in Australia and they ran me ragged in five cities. I didn't see one kangaroo, by the way. I'm very annoyed by that. So next time I want to actually see a kangaroo. But uh, we're cheap at Atlas and Ron's cheap, which is a good thing. And so when I was in Perth, he said, You've got to stay at my house, which is really lovely, but i got to tell you, 5 o'clock in the morning, get up, get coffee, and bicycle all over Western Australia. <laughs> and uh, Ron's nearly a year older than I am, but uh, he, I could not keep up. Uh, he has a boundless energy. And I'd like to mention one last thing. Ron has a uh, tradition of providing a unique Australian gift. Uh, to other people that often it's very endearing for people and uh, we wanted to find something appropriate uh, something aquatic possibly the scrotum of a blue whale match <laughs> <laughs> these traditional kangaroo scrotum gift <laughs> one of a kind <laughs> Just, I want to be very brief, and I, I certainly don't want to quarrel with uh, Mr. Grossman on spelling. I'm sure he's right about how minor is spelled, but I have my questions about Ron's true age. I know exactly when and where I met him. It was earlier this year in the train station in Milan. We were both speaking at the free market roadshow, and, and, and Ron appears there, and the efficient planning was that we would drag our bags several blocks on the rollers across cobblestone streets to get in the nick of time to the place where the event was taking. And I couldn't keep up with Ron. I couldn't keep up with him. I said, Ron, I mean, this he said, oh, well, let me explain to you. In Perth, I participated in a competition where we race wheelbarrows. And I said, yeah, is there a kangaroo in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> 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 a lot of, a lot of <laughs> uh, I've only been to Perth twice. I think most of America, most people in the world have never been to Perth. You know, we think of Australia, Melbourne, 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 and Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, and then we have on Earth. Well, I went to Australia, wasn't I? I said, well, what do you see when you've got a secret? I said, well, okay, we're going back. It's 3,000 miles across this place over there. And that's where Ron and people like that who live in the real Australia, where they're actually doing things. They're mining resources, they're growing sheep, whatever they call it. <laughs> 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 Seven percent of the population of Australia live in Western Australia. They produce forty-eight percent of the exports. Can you just get over here? What you what you just heard is a statistic that ought to be taken into heart of every country in the world. Probably in most countries in the world, 7% of the people produce about 45% of the world. What the hell do I think they will do with you with that? Uh, Ron, I mean, I've read it. Approaching CI is always, because that's a good process, it's always been 
I'm sitting there and said, I need the wives in the, in the kitchen. <coughs> I said, Ron, they're not managers. I said, Ron, managers from Australia? Yeah. I said, well, why did he tell us he was coming? He's in there. He's talking about mining. He's talking about environmental issues, global warming. He's talking about freedom and so on. He got out of his head and said, Ron, why did you say that we were going to it was a general view about the line. He always says this in that later. Anyway, you're dealing with a person who's a rare resource anywhere in the world. He's certainly a rare resource, as you've already heard, from Australia, because if the other 7% of the people in Western Australia were Ron Manners, the world would be so, so safe and wealthy. So, Ron, thank you very much.